Hey, this is Cedric from Vertex Marketing Agency, a Facebook ad agency. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a better way of analyzing your Facebook ads data. Now, I actually always talk about the importance of using a different platform and not just ads manager to analyze your Facebook campaigns, your ad set and your ads. Because the story that sometimes Facebook tells you can be completely different than what's actually happening. So this is why I've made other videos on this channel showing you how to connect your website to Google Analytics 4 and use that as a way to analyze your campaign. I've actually also made another video showing you how to analyze your Facebook ads inside a tool like GA4. I actually want in this video to give you another alternative and something that honestly, in my opinion, can actually work even better than GA4 for certain type of businesses. So I'm actually gonna show you how to create a cool dashboard just like this one. But before I actually go and talk about how we're gonna be able to achieve that, I just wanna share with you guys which business I think this would work really well for, but then also which business slash industry this wouldn't really work too well because I don't really want to waste your time. So the businesses that this would work really well for are companies that are service-based business or that offer one product that is not so expensive. And let me explain, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a specific landing page, right? And that landing page is only going to be available to people that are clicking your Facebook ads. So it could be potentially an old landing page that you have, but you need to change a URL and the only place where you're going to share that URL is on Facebook or is on Google ads, depending on for which platform you're applying the strategy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use Google Tag Manager to send the data. So once someone, let's say, submits a form to send that data to a database and for a database, we're going to use a Google Sheet. I'm going to show you how to add a timestamp, how to pass a UTM so you can see which campaign it's coming from, which ad set and which ad. And then from there, we're going to connect the Google Sheet to something called Google Data Studio which is actually the platform that I use to create uh, this report right here that I've already shown you. So this is the process, but it only works when the action is something like a lead or a product that is, like I said, not too expensive. And the reason for that is because let's say that you were actually to sell a product that costs 150 or $200 on Facebook if someone's going to look at the ad, they probably want to do the research first. They might go on YouTube, see if this actually fits their needs, right? So the user is going to do a lot more research than let's say if they're booking a free consultation or it's simply just like a lower end, like a, a cheaper product, let's be honest. So the sales journey will be a lot shorter if ever it's a service-based business and you're offering like a free consultation or if it's a product, let's say under $30 because the user doesn't need to do that much research because it's a lower price. So they can just go ahead you know, and put in their information and purchase a product. But this strategy is really, really effective and it's gonna give you, like I said, another tool that you can use to analyze your campaign and and I promise uh, if you do this right, the data you're gonna see inside your report will probably be different than the data you see in Ads Manager and you're gonna be able to make better decisions with this little tool that I'm gonna show you how to build. So with that being said, I'm actually gonna share my screen now and I'm gonna show you exactly how we can achieve this. So what you're looking at right now is actually the landing page that I've made specifically for this demo. Hopefully your landing page will look better than mine. I've made this really quickly, but this is the landing page that I'm using to send the information to the database, right, for this demo. Now, I just wanna say that it's really important that the landing page that you make for this tool, that you only share that URL inside your Facebook ads. So don't use that same landing page for Google ads and YouTube ads, because now you're gonna end up with a lot of traffic from lots of different platforms and it's gonna mess up the reporting. Because yes, we're gonna be passing UTMs, but what could potentially happen, and it happens all the time, someone likes your ad or your offer and they share with one of their friends, maybe the UTM will get lost, maybe they'll actually remember the URL and then go back later and then again the UTMs just might not be there so this is why like in our tool we're gonna look at the overall amount of leads that we were able to generate from this landing page and that's really gonna tell us how many leads let's say we're in this example we're gonna be using leads but you could be doing something similar for purchase but that's how we're gonna be able to know what is the overall amount of leads but then when we want to dig deeper and see which ad is generating what then that's when we can look at the UTMs but again make sure that the URL is a URL that is unique and you haven't used that URL in the past and do not share it across all platforms. Now, let me actually show you what we're gonna do for the database. So this is actually a Google Sheet that I've made and I recommend that you actually use this Google Sheet. Well, you kind of need because it's not a regular Google Sheet. Yes, you can see that we have uh, those uh, columns here, but I've actually added something else to the Google Sheet, which I'll show you in just a second. But go ahead and look in the description of this video. It might be somewhere 
on the screen and go ahead and make a copy of this Google Sheet and I'll show you why you need to make a copy. So if I click on extensions, I'm gonna open this up and this is like the uh, script editor. So just in case you didn't know, you can actually add functionality to a Google Sheet that is just like not native to the platform and that's exactly what we're doing here. So we're changing the Google Sheet and we're gonna be basically creating like an API endpoint and then we're gonna use Google Tag Manager to send the data to the endpoint. But we do need to make some modifications and we need to add this piece of code here. So when you make a copy and you click on the uh, script editor, I believe it's called, uh, the app script, sorry, it's gonna bring you here and you should have a code like this. Now, it's really important that you use the proper sheet name. So when you make a copy of this, you're probably just gonna have the standard name, which is sheet one. So if you're making modifications to the name, let's say you wanna decide to call it something else, that's fine, but then you have to go here and you have to reference it. So you have to, let's say you change it to banana, you need to enter the sheet name banana. Now the sheet key, this is actually, you can, you can find the sheet key right here. So it, when we're looking at the URL, right here so for me it's right after like the d so we have the spreadsheet d slash and then this is the key right and then right here it says slash and then edit that at this point that is not the key so it's only really what i've highlighted here okay so just make sure maybe we can actually zoom in on this so you can fully see but this is the key so your key is going to be different than my key right because when you're making a copy of the google sheet you're going to have your own key so go ahead and copy that and you want to actually paste this right here once you've done that you can actually hit deploy here and you're going to hit new deployment and now the, the, the type is actually gonna be a web app, okay? So you wanna make sure that you select that. So select web app, because if not, it's actually not gonna work. So web app right here. Uh, you don't need to give it a description. You can if you want. So you actually wanna execute this as yourself. So go ahead and grab your email here. So this other part right here is actually really important because they're gonna ask you who should have access to this. And then if you select only yourself or anyone in your company, let's say, when a user goes and submits the form, the, the, the data is not gonna be able to get sent to the Google Sheet. Really important that you select anyone at this point. Once you've done all this, then you can then just hit deploy. Now that it's deployed, what you wanna do is you wanna look at this URL and you can just click the copy button right here and you're just gonna to wanna to save this somewhere because we will need this later. Okay, now I'm just gonna go back to the Google Sheet and I just wanna kinda of give some more explanation on how this uh, sheet works. So here we have those column and just with that, you're gonna be able to do exactly what I said earlier in this video and kinda of report and see how many leads you're getting or purchases and then which campaign or ad set or ad is generating what. Now let's say you wanted to add other things here and cause I'm gonna show you how you could potentially send more information and when I set this up for clients sometimes what i'll do is on top of just sending this data when a user submits a form we sometimes ask for like their email or we ask for the phone number and i'll go ahead and also send that inside the google sheet so that when we're getting leads ads manager also tells you that right they tell you okay well you got xyz amount of leads and same thing like a tool with google x4 but what they don't tell you is who they are and that's the data that we can potentially access if you're sending it to the google sheet so sometimes what i'll do is i'll add that as well then i can go maybe in the crm see who they are uh, and do some pretty cool stuff. But just to keep things uh, simpler for this demo, I'm not gonna be sending that because it would require a custom JavaScript and uh, for you to be able to play with the data layer. It is something that's doable and it's pretty cool. So just wanted to mention that, but you could also always add more columns here. So you can honestly add anything here and I'm gonna show you how to send it now. So this is my Google Tag Manager account. If you're not familiar with Google Tag Manager, I recommend that you actually uh, watch the other video that I made on uh, how to use Google Tag Manager, what are tags, triggers and variables because you're gonna need to have like the foundation in order to set this up but what you need to do now is there's gonna be a link in the description of this video or maybe somewhere on the screen and you need to download a specific template that's actually gonna allow you to send the data to a Google Sheet so I have actually made a template just for you. And before that template, what was actually gonna do is there was like a custom JavaScript tag that I was gonna share with you guys. But then as I was reading over the code and thinking about it, I thought to myself that it's probably gonna be pretty complicated to show you guys how to use this tag. So uh, me and my developer actually got on a call together and we actually decided to develop the template just for you guys, just for actually for this video. So if, if you appreciate that, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up because honestly we did that just for you, just for the channel. So when you download that template, which again, you can get it from the description of this video, you're gonna get a few different things. First of all, you're gonna get the tag, which that's the Google Sheet connector. And this is the one that's gonna be sending the data to uh, Google Sheet. But you're also gonna get some variables. 
So if I scroll down here, you're gonna get a timestamp in seconds. Um, and that's again, a custom JavaScript variable that we've made. So you are gonna have that when you get the template and this is gonna give a timestamp to the event. So that's something that you need inside your Google Sheet. Now we have the UTM campaign, you have the UTM content, UTM medium, UTM source. Um, and yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it. So you're gonna actually get all that when you get the template. Now let me actually show you how to set this up. And just in case you're not too sure how to actually add that to your container, when you download the template, you're gonna wanna go to admin and you're gonna click on import container. Here, you're gonna choose the file, then the workspace is gonna be an existing workspace and you wanna probably merge it. So once you upload the file, you're gonna get merged and you should see like a save button. I didn't upload the file obviously, so I, I don't see the save button, but you're gonna see a save button. And by the way, when you download the file, the template, it's probably going to be a, like it's gonna open up probably on your internet here, like in a new tab. And you're probably just gonna see a bunch of code and you're gonna be like, what the heck do my supposed to do with that. Well, if you're using something like Chrome or it should be similar to in a bunch of different places. So you're just going to want to right click the file and then just save it to your computer. Once it's saved again, you upload it there and you hit save. And that's how you can, you can actually add my template to uh, your, your setup here. Cause I want to mention that cause I know I'm probably going to get a lot of questions on how to upload this to uh, your container. But again, once you've uploaded it, you're going to get the tags, the variables. And if you hit the new button here, I'm actually going to I'm gonna use this one, but when you don't have it to set up, you can just click on it and you should see here under custom and that's actually the, the Google Sheet connector, right? So pretty easy to find. Then I'm just gonna open this up because I've already added some of the information. Now the Google Sheet endpoint URL. So if you remember correctly, when I made you save or I should say deploy your app here, there was a script that I made you copy. Now this is actually where you wanna put it. So you wanna go here and simply put in your endpoint URL right here. Now the Google Sheet column. So this is where you need to add all the Google Sheet columns. So when you get this Google Sheet, those are the one that are coming with it. And it also comes with the variables. So you could technically just use that. There's, you don't need to change anything. You could actually publish it. The only thing you're gonna to wanna to change is your trigger, which I'll get into that in just a second. But this is good to go. So let me actually show you what you would need to do if you wanted to send more information. So let's actually pretend we wanna send the email address. So you could simply just add the email here and then in the Google Sheet, you need to also add the email here. So we're gonna add the email column. Now, if you're naming it email with a, not, not a capital E, you wanna make sure that in this input box, there's again, not a capital E. If ever I was to use a capital E, then that might actually cause a problem and the data is not gonna be able to get sent. Another thing is you want to keep the exact order that you have in a Google Sheet. So if the timestamp is the first thing in a Google Sheet, make sure that inside that template here, the timestamp is the first thing. That's just the way that, that, that it works. So make sure that you're following the exact order and that you're using the exact names. If you are not using the order or the name, then obviously it's just not gonna work. So just keep that in mind. Now let's actually talk about the trigger. So this is a pretty simple landing page that I've made. And as my trigger, I'm actually just using a simple button click. And I believe it's when the click text equals submit. That's what actually sends the data to the Google Sheet. So if I'm actually looking at my trigger here, yeah. So when the click text equals submit, then it sends a tag. One thing to keep in mind is if let's say someone is landing on this page because I'm link in my Facebook ads, that's actually the URL that I'm putting in plus the, the UTMs, right? So when someone is landing on that page, this is where the action is. One thing to again, keep in mind is let's say the page that the user gets on is different than the page where the form would be for whatever reason you have, I don't know, it's a two step funnel or maybe it's uh, maybe what you're using your, as your trigger is actually a thank you page, right? So when they submit the form, it brings them to the thank you page. When they get to, let's say that thank you page, the UTMs won't be in the URL anymore. Although the data will send to Google Tag Manager, but because our variable inside Google Tag Manager here are looking at the URL and are grabbing the UTMs, if the UTMs are not there, unfortunately, nothing's gonna be able to get sent to uh, our Google Sheet. So that's just one thing to keep in mind when you're creating your trigger. Make sure that when the data gets sent, that the UTMs are are there. I mean, it's possible that they're, they're not gonna be there because again, we've talked about that. If the user deletes them or shares the URL with a friend or something like that, UTMs can get lost. But for your trigger, make sure when you're testing that you're actually getting the UTMs inside the Google Sheet because again, if you're using like a thank you page as your trigger, then the UTMs won't be there. Now, let's say you really wanted to use like a thank you page as a way to trigger the the event to Google Sheet, because maybe that's what you're using also for your lead event. And I totally understand that. It's totally doable, but what you would need
need to do is just push the UTM content, right? So all the UTMs to the data layer. And then from there, you could use a data layer variable um, and, and not the same kind of variable that we're using there to then send it to the Google Sheet. So it's a little bit more complex and that's why I didn't want to really get into to that in this video, but it's it's totally doable. Like I've done it plenty of times. It's just, it requires a bit of a different strategy. So just to keep things simple, I would recommend that you use again, just a trigger that whenever the action is true, the UTMs could also still be present on the, in a URL. This hopefully gives you an overview of how everything works so once you kind of understand if you've potentially added columns or you're just keeping it as is because again what we have here will work and you'll be able to report everything you can actually just go ahead and hit save and then from there it's actually time for testing so I'm gonna go ahead and hit preview and here it's actually a little tool that I use it's a Google product actually that allows me to create UTM so if ever you've never seen this tool I'll leave the link in the description of this video it's pretty cool to create UTM so I'm just putting my website URL here I'm gonna do the campaign source the campaign medium and the campaign name and then the campaign content now as soon as you add all that you don't need the campaign term like I usually don't really use that for Facebook ads and then we actually have the generated URL now I can just go ahead and copy that and as you can see, like the UTMs I've been added to my URL. Now I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna paste this inside of my GTM. Great, so we're connected to the page. Uh, I can actually see it right here. And just to show you, there's nothing on the Google Sheet yet, right? So it's a, it's a clean Google Sheet. Now I'm just gonna put in some information. I'm just gonna say like test here. Let me move that. And now I'm gonna click the button. Perfect, so I just clicked the button. And if we look here, the Google Sheet did fire. So if ever you click the button and you see here, it's still like, let's say you're using the same sort of like trigger as me, like a click text or click ID. When you're making that click, you should see your tag that it should fire. If it doesn't fire, then you probably have an issue with the tag. Now let's take a look at the Google Sheet together and we have it right here. So this was added because I actually went ahead on the website and I submitted the information. So it's actually pretty cool. We're using Google Tag Manager as like a data transportation tool and then we're sending that to the Google Sheet. Now, I gave you the example of the email and I didn't create the input, so that's why we're not getting a value here because that was just an example. But this is a timestamp, this is a UTM source, this is a UTM campaign, and this is a UTM medium, and then we have the UTM content. Now that we're able to, basically, we've built a database with Google Sheet, we're able to actually send that to the Google Sheet. Now I'm gonna show you how to actually connect that to the Google Data Studio so you can really visualize the data. Now, I also just wanted to say that this is a Google Sheet and this is a great database, but for bigger companies where we spend, you know, like a lot of money on Facebook ads, let me just put it this way, uh, we actually destroy the Google Sheet because with Google Sheet, you can actually only have up to 20,000 uh, rows. I, I, I think you could potentially have more than that, but honestly, anything above 10,000 rows, like that's when the Google Sheet starts getting like really buzzed buggy, slow, and laggy. So then at this point, what we do is instead of sending the data to a Google Sheet, we send it to BigQuery. And by the way, for people that don't know what BigQuery is, it's like a Google Sheet, but on steroids. So BigQuery can like handle like millions and millions of rows when a Google Sheet definitely can't do that. So just keep that in mind, because if ever you're getting a lot of traffic, it might actually be just simpler to just connect it to BigQuery. But also in let's say three to four months from now, you notice that it's getting to starting to get laggy. It might actually be because, you know, Google Sheet doesn't cut it for you anymore. You need to get something like BigQuery. But again, let me actually show you how you can explore this data and bring that inside uh, Data Studio. Okay, so first step is to go to datastudio.google.com. And by the way, Google Google Data Studio is actually another free tool from Google, so it's pretty cool. Now, once you create your, your first report, you're gonna see something like this, so it's a blank page. You wanna add your data, so I'm gonna click on that. And then this is when you can need to connect your source. Now, as you can see here, you can do lots of stuff. So you can connect to Google Analytics, you can connect to Google Sheet, BigQuery. There's honestly so much stuff that you can do with the Google Data Studio. Google Data Studio is kind of like one of these tools that there's so many things that you can do and you can customize it in so many different ways where if you can think it, you can kind of like do it. So it's a pretty cool tool. But with that being said, there is a bit of a learning curve. So let me actually just click that. So I'm gonna to wanna to connect it. This is where I'm gonna just choose my spreadsheet which I believe I named it GTM to Google Sheet right here. And now I'm just gonna select my worksheet and I can just add that. 
So it just created this for us, which is kind of nice. And if we select it, we can look to the right and we can kind of see what's happening here. So it's using this, the date, then how we're adjusting the, the time is with the timestamp column right here. And by the way, in case you're like, what is this? Like, this is just a bunch of numbers. Like this, that's not actually a date. This is actually a special timestamp. So if you go to timestamp, I think like timestamp converter, and we open this up and you paste that code here and hit this, it's actually gonna convert it to an actual time. But this is different than just like giving you like a specific date and year. It goes into like, as you can see, the hour, the minute, and all the way down to the second. So this is why like a generating like, like timestamps like that is really accurate when you're trying to see exactly when did the event, or in this example, when did the lead actually happen? And a platform like Google Data Studio actually understand this and they're actually gonna convert it right into like a, a real date. So when we're adding control here, we can add a little date range picker. And when we're changing the date to let's say last seven days or last 30 days, it's gonna go ahead and show, let's say all the leads that came in the last 30 days. And it's gonna look at the timestamp in order to, to understand that. But yes, really with Google Day Studio, you can do so much. Like you can go here if you want, you can change the UTM source and instead only add UTM medium. And now you're gonna actually see the UTM medium and here we're doing a record count which obviously right now we only have one but uh, as you as let's say I were to actually set this up on a website I would get a lot more and then you can actually do some pretty cool stuff as I shown you in the first example when I actually started recording the video and I can maybe show you that example again one more time here but just use your creativity guys and this is also maybe when you want to have a conversation internally and see what is the actual important data that you want to get into this data studio so I've actually uh, mentioned that Google studio connects uh, with a lot of the other things so in uh, the example that I've actually uh, showed you earlier in this video, we're actually connecting it to the Facebook API. So that's how we're able to like pull in the spend and then we can create calculated metric inside Data Studio to do like spend divided by total leads in that specific time frame, And that's how we're actually able to get like a an accurate cost per lead and we're able to generate that inside our reports. But again, this is when you, you need to have that conversation internally and see like, what do you actually wanna add inside that uh, Data Studio report? If ever you need help setting up your Google Data Studio report, it's actually something that we offer as a service. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link in the description of this video and you can maybe just book a time with me, tell me exactly what your needs, what you want inside that report and then we can just build it for you. But yeah, it is something that we offer as a service. So guys, that is it for this video, just to recap, Cap, I've shown you an effective strategy that you can track really accurately the amount of leads or potentially purchases that you're getting from your Facebook ads. Because again, we know that the only way that they're finding this URL is from your Facebook ads. And then what we do is we send the data from the website to a Google sheet using Google Tag Manager, which I've given you a template. Like I literally gave you everything that you need to transport the data to Google Sheet, and then you can connect a Google Sheet to a data studio to explore and visualize the data. Now, the visualizing the data part of things is not needed. You could actually technically just use the Google Sheet here. So if you're really good with Google Sheet, you can potentially, you know, sum all the leads here and kind of like create your own reporting tool inside Google Sheet. But based on my experience, it's a little bit more welcoming to have all that data available inside a tool like Google Data Studio. But guys, that is it for this video. Again, hopefully this was really helpful helpful and let me know in the comment section if this really helps you uh, make better decisions in your campaign and also let me know if this Google Sheet or if your Google Data Studio report tells you a different story than what you're seeing in Ads Manager. I'd love to know but guys that is it. Bye for now.